So just do your best in everything that you're doing on the field, off the field, it all translates. Um, being a student athlete, you never know who is watching you and who is looking up to you. Um, I always, we see like the young kids like waiting for the student athletes win or lose after a game. And they are so enamored with just the person that they are. Um, they literally could care less about the stats. So you never know who is watching you. So always, you know, do your best and be your best person on and off the field. Welcome to Beyond the Ball Podcast. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? Welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And today we have another exciting episode. As always, you all know if you're, if you're tuning in for the first time or if you're tuning in for the 37th time, uh, the focus of this podcast is to share stories, strategies, and success to help student athletes successfully succeed beyond their degree. And, and today I have a very special guest and, and she was nominated on the platform. And, and I mean, I've, I've seen the amazing work, work that she's done and just been, been following just the good people up in the state of Kansas. So now I, I, wanna, I wanna welcome on, uh, she, she's a young lady who, who is the player development assistant at the University of Kansas. I wanna introduce to the Beyond the Ball podcast and the Baller Nation, Miss <laughs> Lauren Hawkins. How you doing, Lauren? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So, so I covered the title. And if there was anything that I missed, please go ahead and share that. Or at the same time, I want to just kick it to you and get, give you a chance just to do like a little, a little snippet uh, or, or a snapshot of just who you are for the people out there who this might be their first time uh, meeting you. Yeah, so I think that was perfect. Um, player development assistant, at University of Kansas. Um, I know a couple episodes back, you had Ed Jones on. And so he's my boss, took me in. <laughs> um, and I began as his intern, basically. Um, and we've just been working together for two and a half years now. Um, and so now I'm his assistant. And uh, we'll see what happens in May once I graduate. Uh, so fingers crossed, I get to keep hanging out and keep rock chalking. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. What? So what is it like just, just working on the campus of, 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 of the University of Kansas? Because, I mean, Kansas is, like, so historic. And I, I just think of so many different you know, individuals who, who, who've come through there. So like, what, like what's, what's that experience like? Yeah, it's cool to hear you say that um, because most of the time you hear Kansas and people are like, oh my goodness, there's no place like home or like the Yellow Brick Road. And I'm like, nope, it's not just the Wizard of Oz. Um, <laughs> but I definitely think that one thing for sure people always think about is basketball. Um, when they think about the University of Kansas, like first of mine, we invented it. Um, but I think it's so much more than that. Like all of our student athletes at the University of Kansas are doing some great things. Um, our athletic program is doing some great things. And I feel like we're really um, advanced in terms of just making sure that our athletes are getting the development off the field. And so for that, I'm like really, really thankful um, and glad this is where I got to get my feet in the water with working in sports. Sure. Super, super cool. And, and, you, and you said, you know, that, that you're, you're, you're proud of, of the things that you all are doing. So what are, what are some cool things? Because you were just saying how you're so proud about your student athletes. So, so just, just talk with me with, with, you know, a little bit about the, the cool stuff going on. Talk with me just about how, how you see them, right? Because, yeah. you know, everybody else, they see that they may see the athlete, they may see the four star, five star recruit, but, but they don't see the, the person. So, so talk with me really quick, Lauren, just about how you see them from your own two eyes. Right, and I, I think I have like an interesting perspective, I guess, just being a student and then also like coming and working and being in the building with mm -hmm. them. Um, so I'm with them often, like I might see them in class, especially before COVID, I'd see them in class and then we'd all walk over together to the football facility. But I think one thing um, that 2020 has shown me is just like how much of a family that these athletes really are. Um, and they really care about each other. And something that was like super special to me was as George Floyd and Ahmaud Aubrey was going on, we created these committees and the social action committee really just came together and we're having some like really in-depth conversations. Um, and you could just tell like how much love that they had for each other, not only on the field, but off the field. And I think um, 
that definitely is the building block to any relationship, any team is just love. And they definitely have that for each other. And I think 2020 showed me that for sure. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I was a part, you know, of, 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 a, of a college basketball team. So that family dynamic is, oh. is, is very real. It's yeah. like, it, it, it's very real. And, and even just understanding that and just like what you're talking about with, with the love, uh, I, like the, the first thought that comes to mind is just thinking about, you know, all these trips that these individuals are taking with one another, these games they're competing in. And then when they're out there sweating and just going through it and they got these cramps on the field or the court or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, th these are your brothers, these are your sisters. And, and you do begin to see just the individual because if you're struggling to run the suicides or the lines, just like the other person, it, it doesn't matter at that time if you're black, white, yellow, green, purple, like we're all out here struggling and we're all going to just run yeah. these things together until we get it done. So, I mean, j just like what you're saying about the family dynamic and the love. I mean, I, th I think that's, that's just really essential just for, you know, si holistic success, right? right. Even outside right. of sports and, and even outside of like the classroom and stuff like that. They are, they're just one big family. And I, I love that. It's so, because I played sports <laughs> in high school, but was never uh, quite good enough to play after that. But I knew that like, I loved the team dynamic and I love that family dynamic. I'm an only child. So I never really had like brothers and sisters, but like watching them come together, it's like, and I always tell people, it's like, oh yeah, I come to work and I have like 120 older brothers. Um, and so I think that is super, super special. That's very special. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You said, you said, so you said you competed what, so what, what sport did you play? Come on, you got you to gotta give us the background now. Uh, okay, so I played soccer, which was probably like my favorite. Um, and then I kind of moved to volleyball and it was not for me. And uh, so I just, I stuck with track <laughs> throughout high school. Um, did the 400, the 800, and the 4 by 4 And yeah, I stuck with track and it was cool, but it was never really... I don't know if it was, I wasn't good enough to go to the next level or if I wasn't really interested in it. Um, but coming here, I knew I wanted to stay in sports. And I think again, like I said, an only child, my dad really wanted a boy. Um, and so we started bonding over sports. He's like, who am I gonna watch football with? Who am I gonna watch baseball with? I'm like, me, what the heck? And <laughs> so, uh, I think I always tell people, that's how I got into sports. My dad was like, all right, well, you'll be my sports watching buddy. And uh, here I am now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, okay. So you said it, when it, when it got to the point to where now, now it's college, either you said you weren't sure if, if you weren't good enough or you just were saying like, you weren't sure if you didn't have the interest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do you think that is like you just, and I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, if, you know, not playing sports, great playing sports, great, but j just like, like just at that time, it just wasn't the focus for you or you, you had your, you had your focus set on other things. Yeah. I feel like it wasn't the focus for me. And then I also kind of feel like, um, Towards the end of my senior year of high school, I started um, taking photos for the sports teams mm. um, at our school. And I like love that. And I loved, I would do like interviews with like the athletes after games. And this is like all for high school journalism. And I absolutely love hearing their stories um, and being able to tell other people's stories. And I just like fell in love with that aspect of it. And so I kind of walked away from the sports side of it and went into college thinking that like I was going to do journalism, I was going to do broadcast. Um, and that was the route I was taking because I wanted to help people tell their stories. Um, but I feel like working with Ed and working where I am right now in this position, I feel like I have the opportunity to help other people tell their own stories mm. instead of always having to hear it from someone else. And I, I love that. Wow. Yeah, I, I just I just connected the dots in, in, in my mind just as you were as you were saying that. And, and, and for everybody who's just listening, this might be your first time listening. Uh, when we make references to, to Ed, our coach, Ed Jones, yeah. he, he was on an episode of, a few episodes back. And, and, uh, and Coach Ed, as well as Lauren, they worked together just in regards into developing the players uh, at the University of Kansas, the player development for the University of Kansas football program. Uh, but yeah, so, so Lauren, just listen to you talk about the storytelling piece. And I know it seems like Ed is really big on that as well. I, I was like connecting it and I was like, oh, wow. And and you, just like you said, you were studying journalism in high school and then 
and then you got the college and then and then what happened so you got the college you're, you're you're focusing on journalism talk us talk us through that walk us through that right so i got to college um i was like all right like how am i going to get into journalism so i started working for the newspaper the campus newspaper the kansan um and i mean i loved it i was doing every sport um i did women's golf i did little bit of soccer like I covered all the sports I did a lot of football just because that is my favorite sport um but I just was like I feel like something is missing um and I remember I was sitting in a press conference and one of the players got up and they were trying to tell their story and you could just tell I was like okay it seems like they're not comfortable speaking to the media Mm -hmm. almost and I was like okay I was like, I know there has to be someone there that is helping them and coaching them into doing that. And I remember sitting down with one of my professors and I was just like, you know, like I love telling people stories, but like, I want to help them find their own voice. And he was like, oh yeah, that's great. That's great. Like, let me get you connected with Ed Jones and <laughs> the rest is history. And we, uh, I had my interview with him and we literally were on the same page about everything, just like finding their voice, like um, career development, the piece of it. Um, the mental health aspect of it, like yeah. everything. And it just seemed, I was like, yep, this is where I'm supposed to be. And this is like, what's gonna help me walk in my passion and fulfill my purpose. And so, yeah. Wow, man, that's that's super cool. Just to see, you know, see the stars align and everything coming together. So can, can, can you tell us just a little bit about, you said helping them find their voice. So what, what does that really mean j- just in regards to um, the student athletes, is this, you know, helping them be positioned to where they can share a story? Is this them actually vocalizing their story or their message? Talk, talk to us about that. I feel like for me, that just means finding something that you're passionate about. I always feel like that's the first step is knowing what you're passionate about. So then you can articulate that and you can put that into words. Um, because I feel like once you, like, your voice is your passion almost, um, is how I always think about it. And so I feel like once they find that passion and then they're able to articulate that and they're able to voice that and then everything I feel like from there just kind of trickles down um, and they're able to really use their voice and then they're confident in it. If you don't really know what you stand for and you don't really know, you know, what you like or what you don't like, then there's no way you're going to be able to, you know, voice that to others. So, so you're not one of the believers who say that the athletes should just shut up and dribble or just shut up and throw. You're, you're not one of those people. I am not one of those people. I'm so far from <laughs> being one of those people because I feel like at the end of the day, um, you know, you can take your jersey off or you can take um, the ball away, the field away, any of that. And at the end of the day, you still have to be happy with yourself and you have to be happy with, you know, what you stand for and what you believe um, because there's so much more than just being on the field or playing your game. So definitely far from a believer in shut up and dribble. Gotcha. Gotcha. So why is it that athletes are, or why is it so important for, for, for athletes to, to have a voice and, 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 and why is it important for them to uh, just take, take advantage or leverage the platform if, if you will? Cause uh, and, and the reason I'm asking that is cause we know like what's been happening with, with social injustice. And, and I, I make mention of it all the time on this platform because I really believe you all are doing a great job at the university of Kansas. Cause mm-hmm. every time I look up, like, I mean, y'all are killing it from all aspects. I tell you what, I'm like, man, like y'all are really just getting it done. But, but can, you, can you just let me know, or can you just share with, with, with all the listeners out there listening uh, and, and for those people who might have, you know, a different belief, but, but why is it that you personally, Lauren, feel that athletes should leverage their voice or athletes should uh, be certain to, to, to use their voice? Right. I feel like, um, I don't know, if I, just speaking from like, even a professional level, Um, you know, you see athletes like LeBron James, you see the whole WNBA, um, and they are really like using their platform and they're using their voice because it's important to them. Mm -hmm. Um, I think something, a reason, I guess, to use your voice would just be that impact that you wanna leave. Like when you're gone from here, what are people gonna think of you? Like if you didn't use your voice, if you didn't use your platform, they're not gonna know you from, you know, the. You might have been a quarterback out of school. You could have been a point guard somewhere, but who are you? Um, and I just think that impact is something that I always, always think about. And I think that's why using your platform is so important um, because you want to leave something behind uh, when you're gone or when you're done playing the game. 
Mm, man, man. Generational, yeah. generational impact, if you will. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beyond the field, if you Beyond will. Beyond the field. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so so talk, talking about that and just thinking about just impacting and, you know, leaving and making your mark. Me and you talked about something a little bit offline. We talked about a person who goes by the name of Sarah Fuller, I believe. Yeah. Sarah yeah. Fuller. I mean, <laughs> some, some people might know her, some people might not. Um, but but you know Sarah Sarah Fuller, uh, man. It, so she 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 is a, a a phenomenal woman in sports, just like yourself. And we witnessed you know her become the first individual. Her, her we witnessed her become the first female to mm -hmm. compete in a Power Five. Well, help me out, help me out, Lauren. Yeah, so she I was the make sure I word it right. She was the first um, woman to long snap in a Power 5 game, play in a Power 5 game. Um, and I think something else that I always think about because she had just helped her team uh, win, I believe, the soccer championship. And then they came back and she was on the field making history again. Uh, so that is super cool. Man, yeah. So, so what's your... What's your thought on that? Well, let me let me let me just let me ask like this: What what, what was your thought when you first heard, like I, about I, about her, about I was her? So excited! I had like, cause my family knows, like I'm so into sports, so people are like sending me articles left and right. I was so excited, um, but I just in my head I was like, and this is so bad that this was my first thought, but I was like, oh my goodness, like I'm sure the comment section on social mm. media is going to be filled with so much negativity. Um, I couldn't even make myself read the comments. I was just like trying to focus on the positives, but I think um, that is something that women in sports deal with a lot. It's like, okay, so there's something happening and it's huge, uh, but we also have to think about the fact that, okay, but there's gonna be a lot of negativity coming with it. Um, and I just can't wait until there's a day when something like that can happen and everyone is just super excited. Yeah, I mean, I think it almost, well, it, it, it doesn't necessarily water down the impact, right. but I think it, 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 it does, it, it, it does like create just, just a level of tension because I mean, th this, this is history being made and, and this is barriers being broken. Right. And then, you know, somebody at home somewhere or wherever they are, you know, and, and they're just, they're just throwing shade just for right. the fact of what, well, I don't understand why somebody can be so mad or how somebody can be so mad just because you know she, she's a young she's a young lady, she she had herself in position, and and, and I I was listening to I think it was like a podcast I was listening to a podcast and they were talking about just like how some college sports or some programs are sponsored and, and they were going like more in depth to mm -hmm. why to to why first of all bringing her on versus bringing on like a male just made a lot more sense right right and then, yeah and, and and then even the fact of I mean. <clears throat> she has she has the credentials right like she she some probably could consider her to be overqualified because right. it's like you're you and were you were made for this moment oh go ahead go ahead no you're fine I just I think that's what blows my mind sometimes I'm like and it's always the people that are hating are like not like they don't have the credentials to do um what mm. it is that she's doing um so I you know sometimes you got to take negativity I guess with a grain of salt because a lot of the times uh the people that are doing the hating probably aren't in the same position as you or have the same credentials as you. Uh, but like you said, I, they were just throwing shade. And I was, you know, I was like, I cannot look at these comments. <laughs> I cannot do it. Yeah. And, and so there, there's something, I, I saw something funny um, on, on Twitter actually. And I, I think it was Chuan who, who, who shared it. And it was the, one of the guys who, who tweeted something uh, uh, he just, I think he, this wasn't even directed at Sarah Fuller necessarily, but I think it was a tweet. He was like, oh, 30 yard field goal. I can kick that. Right. And then on the show, they brought him into, they brought him into the studio where they had like a whole field. They had a field goal set up and they're like, well, <laughs> do, do, that was like, do you, do you watch college football? He's like, yeah, I watch college football. He was like, well, do you tweet? Yeah, of course I tweet during games. And he was like, do you remember saying this tweet? 
And then he was like, oh, 30-yard field goal, I can kick that. So they put the ball out there. They said, line it up and just go ahead and kick it. And then, you know, he went through what he saw other kickers do. It's like, oh, I have friends that are kickers. He took the three steps backwards, and they took the two steps to the side. And then he tried to kick it. <laughs> no. But... And then the ball didn't even no. make it five yards. See? So then he – yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. The ones throwing shade are the ones just on the couch eating some chips during the game. <laughs> basically yes yeah, hold my beer but right. um you know it, it, it got it got to the point then to where he had to apologize he's like yeah I'm sorry for saying what I said so right. you know j j just just thinking about that and I mean I, I think that's just a place where we are in society it, it's sad to where people would rather celebrate seeing you fail or guys in comments putting I can't I hope somebody hurts her and like putting all this stuff and I'm like why that it's, it, what do you it, get out of that? <laughs> you get nothing because, I mean, that's so empty. Yeah. But I think something, um, just you telling that story and saying that he had to apologize, I think it's always great, you know, if I, I, I'm a big believer in your opinion can change um, mm. and it is okay for your opinions to change. So I think, you know, even though what he said might have been a little uh, out of pocket, um, that he was able to learn from that you know, is what I took from that, what I heard when you were telling that story, just it's okay to apologize and it's okay for your opinions to change. Wow. That's real. Sure. <laughs> that's, 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 that's super that's real. Okay, so those talking about opinions changing and, you know, with, with you being a young lady, I, I want you just to talk a little bit for a second about about women in sports. And, and the reason I say that is because I think women are are underrepresented within sports and and just like what we were talking about before not because they don't have the credentials right. not because they can't do the job adequately but it's it's just talk, talk to me lauren talk to me <laughs> i think there um, are a lot of stereotypes on women in sports um there's a lot of reasons why people think that women want to work in sports um some positive some negative um, but I think for me, especially being young, uh, working in sports and still being a student, I think a lot of the times people, you know, think that I'm in the building for access or I'm in the building for whatever it might be. And I just, I don't believe that that's the case. Um, and I think that those stereotypes also have kind of a negative connotation on uh, me. I know when I, Ed and I were talking one day and he was like, okay, so like, what do you think was like probably your biggest challenge so far in the internship? And it like, wasn't like my answer wasn't, oh, you know, I was like challenged when you had me work on this project or I was challenged when I worked on this project. I was like, you know, when I first got here, I was like, I'm young and I'm a woman um, and I'm kind of inexperienced. And so in my head, inexperience equated to um, incompetence. And that is far from the truth. Um, but I think just hearing those things all day long about what people say about women in sports definitely had an effect on me and how I was like working at first, but not anymore. We're, we're good over here now, but I just think that um, definitely believing that, you know, and experience and incompetence went hand in hand. I think that heavily came from just the things that people say about women in sports. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I think it's just sad. And I think on, on the other side of that, it just shows just, I guess, lack of fulfillment on their own part for, for, for them to say whatever they might say or direct whatever comments that they might direct at women. But, but with you being a woman in sports, I'm curious, like j just for you, just to share insight here for if, if there's a young lady out there who's aspiring to, to, to maybe do what, do what you're doing or do what you've been able to accomplish. And they, they, they want to get in the building because they feel that they have the credential that they feel that they want to serve and support student athletes or, or athletes in a capacity. What, what would be your word of advice? I think it all goes back to what I was talking earlier about just finding your passion and knowing what you're passionate about um, because that'll come through. I know for me, I'm like, you know, I might not have the most experience in the building, but I am really passionate and you cannot teach someone to be passionate about some, something. You can't teach someone to care about other people. Um, so I just think it is being yourself. And if you are truly passionate, that will come through. Um, and that is always my word of advice. I don't, I, I feel like that is such like a, a hard piece of advice because like, well, if you're not passionate, then I'm saying, but 
I just feel like, you know, if you are passionate and that is really what you want to do, that'll shine through. Um, and people will see that you're genuine and you have true intentions and yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So where, so where does Lauren see herself in? Uh, we'll, we'll just, we'll, we'll just say, we'll just put a stretch on, we'll just say in five years, like, where do you see yourself in five years? Right. What, what could that look like? In five years, I see myself um, having a podcast. <laughs> um, I see myself still working um, in the development realm. Um, I see myself hopefully have uh, graduated from law school, um, but still just helping other people. I think whether it's five years, 10 years, 20 years, I think I always want to see myself helping other people um, become the best versions of themselves. Super dope, super. You said law school. Yeah, I. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, law school. You know, maybe possible future agent, maybe. I don't, you know, <laughs> lots of goals and uh, aspirations, but uh, yeah. Hey. Looking at law hey. No, no, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And I got another just random question. If there's one person you could have dinner with, alive or dead, who would it be? I would say. Probably Tony Dungy. Um, I always tell this story, but I feel like the first football game that I ever remember watching, um, I believe it was 2003, and it was him and Lovey Smith at that Super Bowl. And ever since then, I'm just like, I love Tony Dungy. He has so much, like his leadership style, I like applaud him. He is a quiet strength. I just I love that like there's no need always to you know yell and scream you can get your point across and so I just love that um yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the I think the title of one of his books is like the quiet stream yep the quiet stream <laughs> yeah okay okay I, so I think okay. it was 2003 people are probably gonna go back and be like oh she was wrong but <laughs> I'm pretty oh. sure if, 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 if that's the only thing they take out this interview, I think they need to go see a therapist like right now. And, and I advocate for therapy 110%. I have like a, a, a appointment like next week, but yikes. Okay. Yikes. So what, what do you feel? This, 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 is, this is the last question I'm going to ask you just before we go ahead and get ready to get into the two minute drill. But what okay, do you, okay. well, what, what's, what, what's the best thing for you about working at the University of Kansas? people without a doubt it is the people i know you can go to an airport and have a jayhawk on your shirt and you will hear a rock chalk you can go i like every i said this every thanksgiving um i typically go to atlanta with my family and every time i'm in the airport it's oh rock chalk oh rock chalk like there are jayhawks everywhere um the people here truly care about not only the students the student athletes like it is just an amazing little community um I am people for sure man yeah I still I, it, it's, it's definitely on my bucket list of course I want to go to I, I, want, I want to see you all's football team play and I definitely <laughs> want to see the basketball team play because you know basketball is my sport right, but, right. yeah I mean I got I got to come to I got to come to Kansas make there's it happen. nothing like a game in Allen Fieldhouse it is that atmosphere is so crazy Oh man. I remember my freshman year, I was like, oh my goodness, this is so awesome. Oh wow. Man. Okay, 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 okay. Well, I I, I definitely definitely appreciate you, you know, just, just your vulnerability, just you sharing and uh, you know, giving giving us some insight, you know, pulling back the hood and you know, just just really challenging us. And now, now we're gonna get ready to go into the two minute drill. Okay. And for, for everybody who this might be your first time listening, uh, the two minute drills where I just share a few rapid fire questions and then give Lauren just a chance just to share her thoughts. And then we wrap it up, we put a bow on it, <laughs> call it a day. So Lauren, are you ready? I am ready. Okay, okay. Here we go. Favorite food? Ooh, chicken nuggets. <laughs> From where? Chick-fil-A, number three, eight count. Okay, what's your sauce? Barbecue. Okay, what's the last book that you read? Oh, um, you were the girl for the job, and I cannot remember the author, but it was called You Were the Girl for the Job, and it was amazing. It was talking about walking your purpose, finding your passion, 
um, and then connecting that back to serving God's people. Nice. What's your favorite podcast? Be on the ball. I promise I don't I don't put that in there just for, I really want to hear people's favorite podcast. No, uh, uh, for the girl is what it's called. Um, it's two girls out of Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and they just kind of talk about faith um, and like their college journey and their college experience. I love that podcast. Mm, okay. What, what's what's the most under your most underrated cereal? Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Mm, CTC and your go-to Netflix show of preference it was Friday Night Lights but they just took it off of Netflix so I'm gonna have to say how to get away with murder mm, okay and last and final question one tip that you want to share for a student athlete and you can take your time okay. um I would say um, to just do your best in everything that you're doing on the field off the field it all translates being a student athlete, you never know who is watching you and who is looking up to you. Um, I always, we see like the young kids like waiting for the student athletes win or lose after a game and they are so enamored with just the person that they are. Um, they literally could care less about the stats. So you never know who is watching you. So always, you know, do your best and be your best person on and off the field. That is rich. That is rich. And who would you like to see me interview next on Beyond the Ball? Oh, well, got to advocate for uh, University of Kansas. So I don't know if you know George Majit, but um, he works in KU Leeds. He's awesome. He works with all of the student athletes for KU. Um, and he is full of information and he's definitely a character. So <laughs> shout out to George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know George, and, and me and him, me and him have had like a couple of great conversations. And I was like, nice. I need to, I need to get George on a pot. And y'all are not gonna let me out of the University of Kansas. Y'all not gonna know. let me out. <laughs> you know. Oh man. Well, uh, Lauren, just let everybody know where they can follow you, how they can connect with you, and uh, yeah, just how people can can find out more just about what you do. Right. So you can find me on Twitter at Lauren Sydney underscore. Um, and I believe it's the same on Instagram, but would love to connect, share some tweets about some football and some Chick-fil-A. <laughs> so. That's so funny. I can, I, I, I can actually appreciate your tweets because your tweets like they're, it's not just, it's not just sports, but your tweets are just like what you enjoy. I think, I think one time you were talking about like enjoying like tea or something like that. I think I saw. Probably. Yeah. I think yesterday I literally tweeted about being in my robe on my couch, eating Chick-fil-A. Um, you did tweet that. I, I saw that. I did. Yeah, it's a roller coaster over uh, on my Twitter, but lots of sports content, lots of food content. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock chop. Rock chop. Rock chop. Rock chop. <laughs> well, Lauren, thank thank you for you know taking time to to, to hop on uh, and, and and just share with with the ballers and myself. Yes, thank you. I'm glad we got to connect. For sure, for sure. Well overdue, well overdue. Everybody out there listening, I would encourage you just take time. And first of all, you want to definitely connect with Lauren, but then after connecting her, you want to let her know uh, what you gained or, or what insight that she shared that really made the light bulb go ding on top of your head from <laughs> this episode. And then after that, you want to be sure to share this episode with one or two friends that you feel that it would impact. Um, and as always, as always, ballers, uh, thank you for taking the time to listen and thank you for taking the time to rock with us today because uh, this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree. Jonathan Jones, we'll see you next time.